Hello everybody and welcome back to episode number 18 of the Biff Rugby League podcast. Um, it's quite a busy week. We've So much has happened since we last joined you. Before we get into all that and before we have a little catch up, again, I'm sorry, Discord where we record our podcast, it doesn't want to be able to let us see each other, which once again means that we can't see you. Um, it's something we really, we're really trying to fix, but it's just literally a play by ear job with Discord. Uh, so once we fix that, well, obviously you'll be able to see us again, um, if you want to, of course. Um, but how are we, lads? How have we both been? Um, please don't mention football, and we'll drink to that. Don't worry, you're not gonna. You can rely on me not mentioning football. <laughs> good. Yeah, good yeah, I'm, I'm good. I'm good. Thanks. Good to be back with you. And um, it's really hotting up, isn't it? We get into that like really exciting time of year, so I'm. Uh, I'm ready, I'm ready to go. Yeah, I'm buzzing as well. How are you, Toby? How are you feeling? Yeah, I'm back in university and I've told all my lecturers um, that I need extended deadlines to be able to watch all the uh, playoff rugby league before I hand in any work. So, <laughs> That's fair. Yeah, that is, that is totally fine. Um, I do not have a problem with that. My degree, my second year of uni starts in between both the World Cup, the World Cup starting and the Super League finishing. Um, before we go anywhere, we've got a bit of news from the podcast, which the lads don't know about yet. Um, and I'm telling them live, so whatever their reaction is is genuine. So, um, a few months ago, I applied for something and I totally forgot about it. Um, and I just wanted to say thank you for applying via the media accreditation portal. We are pleased to let you know that your application has been successful and we are looking forward to welcoming you to the tournament. Um, the Biff Rugby League podcast has media accreditation for the Rugby League World Cup, boys. What the hell? What does that mean? <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what it means. I don't know what it means um, for, for the podcast. I don't know what it means for us. Um, but they will be in touch with me over the next couple of months with more information regarding how we'll be able to collect our accreditation. I, um, so, yeah. Well, um, that's that's cool. I, that's I remember. I remember you applying for that, thinking like, you know, they wouldn't they wouldn't even look at our application. Yeah, I didn't know if it was going to be a personal one or like a thingy one. So if it's still open for you two, I recommend going to do it just in case. Obviously, it's personal. So so do we get a blue tick on Twitter now? Uh, I don't know if it's that proper, but maybe. Yeah, well, maybe. I think that's we could ask. We can ask. Uh, Toby hasn't said anything. Have, I, have we shocked him? Yeah, I mean, it's. Um, I, I mean, I find it quite amusing that by sitting in a sitting in a room on Discord and uh, putting putting our what ramblings up onto YouTube, that somebody's turned around and they've said they, you know, they they're they're as valuable as like the Daily Mail. Um, <laughs> I know that's a really bad example, but you know, it was just the first that came to my mind, the first newspaper that came to my mind. But yeah, I mean, well done, Brad. Uh, <laughs> your dogged approach to getting us to the top is really paying off if you're not yeah, gonna, if it's there and the opportunity is there take it if you don't get it well, there's no arm is there so may as well just crack on and we were successful so i'm really i'm really happy i'm glad you two are happy um and i just thought i'd wait to tell you i, I only found out this afternoon at time of recording so yeah for all those that are listening we've already we know 48 hours before you guys so yeah half that we'll um we'll obviously tweet it out <laughs> we'll obviously tweet it out and i mean the, 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 the headline or the title of the episode might give it away it depends if anything sort of funny comes up later on in terms of any weird quips that Robin and Toby come up with later on. Oh, um, doubt it. <laughs> you doubt it, you doubt it. We'll go on to set of six right at the end to do our predictions for the weekend ahead. I just want to run through the score really, really quickly. Robin has stretched his lead a little bit further. Um, Robin, you're now on 75, I'm on 72, and Toby, you're, si you're on 65. I think it might be your... I think you might have lost this year already, mate. Well, I mean, you know, I could pull it back in the playoffs, but... No. <laughs> the playoffs? Um, is that the World playoffs. Cup? Is that the, is that the World yeah. Cup, is it? Yeah, uh, yeah, exactly. I, I forgot the short World Cup, so maybe I'll pull it back, but no, I think, uh, I think I'm think i just going to predict with my, uh, with my heart now. <laughs> um, first major sort of talking point is Ralph Rimmer and Karen Morehouse are leaving their roles within the RFL and... They will be at the end of this year, so after the World Cup and like in, into 2023. Replacements obviously will be announced whenever they're announced. Um, in terms of 
how you two have seen their tenure at the RFL and how they've done their job. Is there anything you kind of want to say? Like I, I, in my role, I've got to, I've got to be very diplomatic, and I've met Ralph a number of times. And as a as a man, he's very very welcoming. He's he's quite funny. He's, he he says things that you don't expect him to say, and he does seem to be able to know what he wants when he comes up with his ideas. And I think he's done a job that nobody really wants to do because of the type of fan base that the sport has. But I don't if, if for you two, I don't really know how you how you see his his ten well his his career as an RFL member of staff. Yeah, I mean I I, I don't know I don't know if anybody else could have done it any better. But I think like if we just sort of like look at what what's happened whilst he's overseen the sport, there's there's the, the Super League breakaway which um was a bit of a mess, wasn't it? Um, but having said that, he did sort of, he was part of the team that brought the sport back together. So, I, like, can we reward him for fixing a mistake that he oversaw? So, there's that. There's, there's, there's the um, the Great Britain tour, which was a bit of a failure. I think it was hampered by the whole COVID thing and, um, you know, the way that Wayne Bennett treat the tour as like a bit of an England warm up. And it was just a bit of a it was just a bit of a failure, um, and we quite often hear like these people high high up in the sports world give themselves a pat on the back for how they managed to like get through the pandemic, which is true. You know, like we we we've done we're back to sort of where we were before. Like someone like said, it never really happened. But then, like, is has is there any sport? I can't think of any sport that just collapsed. So it's kind of like if you. It would only be bad if you didn't do it. So I, I don't know. I've got mixed feelings. Like I say, I don't know if anybody else could have done it better. And it is, it is a, it's a tough ask. Like there's, people expect a lot, and he's it probably got very thick skin to be able to, to do that and not um, listen to the amount of um, abuse that he'll get from from all all over the rugby league world. So yeah, I just I just kind of hope. That, I mean, in a way, it's good that he's not been there too long. So you know he's he's hopefully he's going to pass on the bat like he's done everything he can and now it's time to let somebody else with new ideas come forward. So that's good. We haven't got him stagnating and like showing self interest and just keeping himself up there. So I don't know. It's, it's difficult. It's it's always hard to measure these people because they're very good at making themselves not measurable. But I don't know. I don't know. I, I am I'm not in it like you are, Brad. So I I, I haven't got the same sort of perspective that you have. Nice. That was I quite. I I, I mean I I, agree, I do agree with sort of when when someone comes in and they make and they they have plans and they have ideas and they put their ideas into practice and then obviously they don't go wrong. You have to make a decision whether you stick to your guns or whether you decide actually for the good of the sport we're going to try and fix what we've what we've done. And mm-hmm. fair play to me, he's trying to fix the issue of the separation and it seems to be going down okay. Obviously, we've only, we're only just at the start of this sort of sort of bandage aid sort of and then improving the sport sort of period toby do you think what he's doing now towards the end of his re- like tenure is is paying off um i mean i wouldn't say i wouldn't i'd say we'd have to wait for the world cup to see if it pays off uh, we'd have to wait to the grand final to see if it pays off because i think um you know i think the most noticeable thing is like the we've really started to notice the decline in rugby league in terms of fans but also the game has sort of shrunk back since Ralph's been there in regards to you look at some of the expansion teams we had come in which have filtered out you look at the sort of um you look at how Toronto have um disappeared and again that's a Covid issue but it's just a lot of the expansion um that we were looking at is now sort of died down and I think we'll see at the World Cup um if he's managed to sort of claw it back um but it's uh yeah, I don't know. It's hard to say. I think with the IMG partnership, that might be the finest um, thing anyone ever does for the sport in the UK in the 21st century. So we'll see. Um, but yeah, I think that he's probably doing the right thing by stepping down. Yeah, no, I, I totally see where, where you're coming from as well. Um, as, as a whole, though, I, I just want to thank him for the stuff he has done that is, is good for the sport and his support of 
pushing the game in in community levels as well. He he he's always there. At, um, I think the first time I met him was at the launch of the Southern Conference League at Ealing, and he was interacting with everybody there. And then we met him a few. Then I think did we meet him at a youth board meeting once, or did we not? I can't remember. No, I don't think I've met him. I just mean maybe I've just got lucky and met him every time I've gone there. Yeah. Um, I met him once when I when I was part of the youth board and the exec meeting, and I sort of stepped forward to do that. And he was on the last youth board meeting that I went to as well. So I just feel like I see him everywhere. Um, we're going to move on. Time. Yeah, exactly. He's always around, yeah. which is quite nice, and he's managed to get us out of Red Hall and Media City and into a nice, fancy new office, which I can't actually wait to go and see in a few weeks time which is going to be really really fun at the Etihad I'm looking forward to going to see that um, we'll move on though we'll um, we'll do something we've not done for a very very long time and I'm going to jump straight over to Toby uh, Toby it's the not watch NRL NRL watch um, <laughs> we're back to this it's playoff time it's tasty playoff time are you are you looking forward to it who's your who's your sort of silent horse in that set who's your sort of Who's your who's your money on if, if that makes sense? Canberra Raiders, obviously. Well, okay, apart from the Canberra Raiders, which is very unrealistic, obviously. Um, yeah, I mean, I never really fancy league leaders to win um, uh, uh, to win a, the NRL. Although I think Penrith proved me wrong um, last season with that. Um, but it does always seem to be the team who have managed their players a little bit better throughout the season. Who and then they all come together for those last uh, three or four games to win it. Um, I think this year you're looking um, at sort of North Queensland and Cronulla um, as your two, as your two sort of uh, teams who have both had a fantastic run on the back of a week of 2021. Um, you know, I think that they're both teams that, uh, who are looking to sort of push on. Um, yeah, put push on into the finals now and are playing with a little bit less pressure on their backs um, because nobody expected them to be there in the first place in my opinion um, so yeah I mean that's the sort of cliche answers but I mean I guess it's almost impossible to, to rule out Penrith and Melbourne as well um, I think the South Sydney Sydney game is going to be a really interesting one this this coming weekend yeah we'll speak about that later on that's definitely that's one of our picks because i yeah. think that's going to be a massive i think the winner of that is probably going to make the the final and be in there right well i'm not sure just with you know especially how they've been this season but i think south sydney probably got a better chance than the regular sydney um but yeah i don't know it's um it's fascinating uh we love i love the nrl playoffs i think that they just have the most fantastic format um you didn't know what it was 10 minutes ago. Huh? Was it you that said you didn't know what it was 10 minutes ago? You had to look at what oh, playoff structures. I don't structures. know the format. <laughs> you know, I, I don't know the formats of. Every, I, I have no clue what goes on with the English leagues. Um, but the Australian format I've known for years now is actually probably my favourite. If you've got the ability to play it, it's my favourite way to sort of do a playoff. Um, so yeah, it's fantastic. And just like sit back and enjoy the rugby you know just book off your saturday morning and just sit there and enjoy melbourne canberra and crinola north queensland because this is the like this is the best rugby league you will see all year um these next four weeks so oh yeah we've got a world cup coming up mate oh, yeah <laughs> this is better quality than the world cup it just doesn't mean as much oh, i wait wait till you see greece versus france that's going to blow your mind when nathan Peake scores four tries <laughs> Robin, where do you see the competition being won and lost for the Penrith? Like they're they're top of the table. They have Cleary back, I believe. Now the playoffs have started. His band's finished. Yeah. He yeah. won't be a he won't be a Dally M medal like winner because he's had the ban over a certain number of games, which I think is a really really nice thing that the NRL do. I I quite like that. If you get banned over a certain number of games, you shouldn't be able to win like the Player of the Year award, whatever. Which is which is pretty cool. Um, do you think they're going to hit the playoffs in good form or do you think that the fact that a team has been changed, chopped and changed, chopped and changed quite a bit the last three or four weeks might have derailed them? Yeah, um, no, I think, I think like, 
if this was just like they were getting back into the regular season, I'd say it would. But like the whole the whole like team has been building towards this time of the year. So even though Cleary's not playing, he's there for training, and um, I feel like everything is everything is set up and geared up towards winning this game in particular to give them the week off, and then the the two following. So um, and and like they've got the experience, haven't they? They've been there recently like a lot of their players have been in these finals recently so i i'm not concerned from the panthers point of view um i think they've got what it what it takes i think um kick has um been playing great and i think clear he's just gonna add um add a bit more um uh, a bit more quality in the middle um i think obviously the eels are playing well as well, and I think I think they are actually the the, the next favourites um, to be the grand final winners after Penrith. Um, but I just think that it's just that little bit of experience now that the Panthers have got that that makes me lean towards them a little bit more. Yeah, no, I t- totally get that. I mean, I'm looking at the the playoffs now, and obviously Panthers play the Eels. They'll go into a, a semi final. The Sharks play the Cowboys. That'll be a semi final. Whoever wins that. They, obviously, the loser of those teams gets a second chance against the winner of the other teams. I'm looking at that and I'm going, I don't think the Melbourne Storm will get further than this round. I'm, I know they're fifth in the table, but they're up and down. They are, Yes, they're phenomenal when it comes to finals footy, but the way the Raiders have played the last few weeks and the, the way they absolutely dismantled the, tie, the West Tigers in that first half was... I've never seen a team play that well all season, but I also haven't seen a team play that badly all season. From a Raiders' point of view and perspective, Toby, how did you find the weekend? Like, obviously, fantastic to get the win, but was that more of that was Raiders being absolutely unreal, or was that more of you're just taking advantage of a team that doesn't really care at the minute? Yeah, it's the last game of the season, and I think it's just the West Tigers have gone, well, let's see if we can figure out something new, and they didn't. Um, I don't really read anything into it, um, although obviously it's a great win to pick up when you needed it. Um, I think... I think it's been quite... I think the Raiders would have finished a lot higher if they were able to make some decisions sooner about their squad. Um, I said, well, I, I, you know I'm not Josh Hodgson's fan um, or biggest fan. And the moment he got injured, Zach Walford came in and made a huge difference to their hooker rotation with him and Tom Starlin. Um, the moment Charles Nickel Clockstead, um, I think he got injured and then Xavier Savage comes in and then he's made that fullback jersey zone, but we all knew that Xavier Savage should be taking that fullback jersey. I think the real surprise this season is that Jared Croker hasn't been needed and that Matt Tomoko and Sebastian Chris have really sort of developed in, at centre. Um, so yeah, I think that the squad is actually in a really good place. Um, I don't think there's many there's many sort of players you'd look to bring in to improve this squad. You know, I mean, I'm not saying that's that they've got the best players, but you know when you say there's no reason to get rid of the players we've got if you know what I mean. Yeah, no, I, I totally get you. I mean, I think that's not, that's I not think the that's same situation as the Tigers, obviously, if we want to get rid of everyone. But, I think that, um, that's the situation they're in. Um, well, I mean, we'll just see what happens. We know that, you know, you can never count out Melbourne, but Melbourne are quite a little bit undersized compared to what we're used to, I think. Um, and yeah, we'll, we'll just see. We'll just see. What yeah. about you, Brad? If you had to jump ship and pick another team... Other than your beloved Tigers to, to win it. I, I wouldn't go that far. I wouldn't go beloved. Not right now. Um, <laughs> they're just my. They're just. They're just the team I support. They're not really. I wouldn't say they're beloved. Um, <laughs> I'm looking at it, and it's really. It is really difficult to pick. I think as as an Englishman and the way the Rabbitohs and the Raiders are with sort of English talent, you look at them and you go, actually, I wouldn't mind some of them English lads going to win a Premiership. Um, <laughs> Guild Arts at the Roosters, if they've obviously still got their injury worries, and he'll he'll get a bit of game time in the playoffs, and it'll be nice to see him maybe get a run out in that grand final if sort of their problems sort of go. They've got Nagama there as well at the Roosters, which the way he finished at Saints to him go then winning an RL to wrap up his career would be unreal. As long as it's not the Eels or the Panthers, I don't think I've got. I don't. I put it this way: as long as it's not the Eels, the Panthers, or the Roosters, I don't mind. Um, I just want it to be a really, really good grand final. I don't want it to be like ruined because of a video referee decision or a dodgy six again yeah. call. Uh, sorry, Toby. Um, 
<laughs> but yeah, it, I just wanted to. Remove it's sore. <laughs> is it sore? Is it? I didn't get a response. I feel like he's just. I feel like he's just told me to have four things. <laughs> Uh, but no, it's going to be. I think it's going to be a really, really interesting couple of weeks for the end of the NRL, and I, I can't wait to just sit there and enjoy it without the pressure of having to support a team. I think it's going to be quite nice. In the same sense, I have the same issue with Super League. I don't don't support a Super League team. I'm looking at these the table when I'm looking at the playoffs, and I'm like, this is going to be very, very interesting. Um, Catalan play Leeds again in France. Um, I think that again a week later than the, the the week before, like so two weeks in a, two weekends in a row, they've played twice out there already, won one and lost one. That game I think is probably going to be the hardest game to call of the weekend. Huddersfield Salford as well. In terms of their their playoff, I think Salford the way they've played the last few weeks it has been unstoppable and like they said there isn't any pressure on them. For you two, where do you see? I know Saints won the lead leader's shield, but for me, I think we're going to be the favourites. Yeah, we're going to have been really strong this year. And um, I said I said before about Liam Marshall and how I don't rate him. And to, this year, I, I have to retract that statement and say I was wrong. I think he's he's been really good for them. Um, along along with, obviously, Field and, and French and, and that partnership. But I think because when you've got two strong wingers on either side, it makes it so difficult to, to defend against them. Um, I really like Wigan, and to be honest, I I, I, I agree with you. I, I think I would take them over, over Saints. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if, if Saints did win it, but I just think there's something about this Wigan team. They're hungry, and whereas Saints, I sort of sense this up, like almost complacency. We've seen it a few times. Uh, I watched a game last week against Toulouse, and it was like they were like... They just wanted to do it with as little effort as possible, and then as soon as they realised that wasn't enough, then they then they turned it on, and they did it against Hull FC as well. Just they, they were sort of like matching them until they realised, oh, actually, we're going to have to try our hardest here, and then they actually ran away with it. I think if if if, if they don't get out of that habit, they could quite easily lose to to Wigan in the first twenty minutes and and never get that chance to turn it on. So, out of the two, yeah, I agree. I think we're going to be looking really strong. Toby, would you agree with that, or have you got someone else sort of that you'd put your money on if you had the chance? No, I'm fully behind Wigan. I think that you know they're the I think they're the only team in the competition um, that is built on defence more than off than attacking. Um, I feel like they're a team who um, are going to who stop tries. Well, again, just they they stop tries being scored against them, and then they play off. They use that to play off. Um, on the counter attack type thing, um, and that's in a finals. I think that's going to be invaluable. I think Saints could be that team, um, but I just think they've coasted a little bit this season. I think they've put their feet up a little bit. They've had a couple of injury woes, and they just sort of. I just don't think they're as com- in a, as comfortable a position as they were this time last season. Um, whereas I think Wigan really believe in themselves, um, and they're back playing the Wigan way, which, as we know, is very successful. Yeah, hundred percent. We they sort of they had the Sean Wayne in there. Pete came in, and at the start of the year, we were like, hmm, well, maybe they're not going to be top two. They might be sort of third or fourth or something. And but they're they're going to be probably good towards the end of the year once they've sort of gelled, because not much of the team had really changed. Um, but Field stayed injury free. French has stayed injury free. They've not had any major injury worries. They have the last few weeks. I think Marshall and. Um, Farrell have, have both picked up quite heavy knocks over the bank holiday weekend, which it, I'm, I'm quite happy. It's glad to see we're not having any more double headers as of ne- from next year onwards, which I, I think is absolutely massive in terms of player safety and everything. When we look outside of the playoffs and we look at let's look at Wakefield, they were just as they were closer to the playoffs than they were relegation. We weren't saying that four weeks ago. What what do you think now that they're in that bit of form and they're going to make player changes that suit them? Do you see them moving themselves up the table next year, especially with the decline of Hull FC and a bit of a decline at Cass and the major decline at Warrington? Uh, I don't know. I don't know whether you can carry that kind of form across an off season because for them they were very much like the backs are against the wall. 
and it's do or die and that's it's a different kind of motivation um and i think i think it's worked whatever 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 they decided was the goal at the end of the year it's worked it's got the players up um but like i say i I don't think that that's something that can i don't think it's sustainable having said that Hull fc this year have completely imploded um i'm sure you want to get on to it because we were talking about it before um been been, been speaking about it through the week but like like Hull fc i can easily predict that um if they don't come up with something good in this off season it's going to be a long year for Hull fc fans yeah it was a Five. Uh, it's ten to five on Sunday night. I said I think Radford might be gone after this season. Same with Hodgson at Hull. Twenty-four hours, less than twenty-four hours later, I said, "Told you Hodgson was gone." That is very like. I was surprised. It's been what two years now? Has he been there two years? Year and a half, maybe at max. He's he's not done a lot, has he? But all those big name signings like Luke Gale and. To the players that he sort of wanted in, I say big name signings. Luke Gale's left. Marnie Mouse is is gonna. It will be joining Catalan. Will Smith is going back to Australia. But then Jordan Johnston, Marcus Walker, and Aidan Burrell, three sort of younger lads, not necessarily in and around the first team or often. They're the lads that have gone. So there's not going to be a lot of squad change for whoever comes in, is there? I highly doubt it. Um, I think they've been really cursed with injuries for, since they won the Challenge Cup, though. Um, I think they're easily hitting, you know, scraping up their youth academy pretty much er- towards the end of every season um, recently. Um, and it's just really not been a good look for them. Um, I think there's been some positives out of this season. It's sad, you know, that Ben McNamara um, didn't get to play the full season. Um, you know, um, I don't know, I think there's that positive. Um, I think they have got good players under contract, but they've just struggled so much. They are. I, I, I always associate Hull FC with being the team that changes every week, and them on Warrington, I guess, now. But it seems to be like injury crisis is really sort of hitting them hard. You say their injury crisis is hitting them hard. Hull KR arguably have had it worse in terms of the number of 17-year-olds that they've had to name starting and on the bench throughout the last what six seven weeks maybe maybe more uh quentin lali tonga guy has had to come in and all of a sudden he's their new saving grace because of who his dad is and how young he is and they expect him to come in and do an absolutely massive job they had 16 players at the weekend one of those players played what the last five minutes off the bench so in terms of that sort of rotation, they were had they had fifteen players in a Super League game against not a weak Hull FC team and absolutely did them over. It was thirty six four. It's twenty four four at half time. The Hull KR lads went out there and put everything out there for the first forty minutes, but Hull FC couldn't fight back in that second half. And do you think that says a little bit about their effort and about the fact they weren't even willing to fight in a derby game? Like they're probably their biggest game of the season, seeing as they couldn't make the playoffs. They had to go out there and win that game, didn't they? Yeah, pretty pretty embarrassing. At, like at home as well. Like would have been would have been like yeah, awful. And that, that's you can when when you see that kind of a result, that's when you that's when it makes sense that they've got rid of Brett Hodgson. I think if you, if a coach can't get his players up for that kind of a game, then you're hopeless, aren't you? Um, yeah, and Hull KR have struggled, but I feel like the Hull KR under Danny Maguire, well, under Tony Smith as well before that, they, they're like a team that really plays for each other. And I think if you took a lot of their players out of that team and put them in other teams, they wouldn't be as good as they are. But when they're together and they're, they're like playing off the back of each other, I like to see, I like to see Minchella, obviously Mickey Lewis, when he's fit in that team is awesome. Um, you know, I, I feel like they, they just bring the best out of each other and it's it's a very attacking style and there's not so much focus on the defence. Um but I like I like it. I like this this like plucky little rover side that does the, the like big brother over with only fifteen <laughs> players that is good. It's like I, I, I like it and I'm I'm glad to see um like Danny Maguire's influence sort of happening so early on in his coaching career as well. Yeah, I just, I, Toby, I'm going to ask you a question about you. The early exit of former Hull KR, this is according to the BBC, 
The early exit of Tony Smith apparently left a sour taste in the mouth of everyone at the club. That's what Danny Maguire said. Smith left at the start of July to, after saying he was going to leave at the end of the season. And then Maguire stepped in and took over the, the reins and and has led sort of... Do you know what I mean? He Seven defeats in eight games. Hockey R was still 10th. Smith hadn't got a pre... Like, he was still at the same win percentage of like most of the other coaches they had. It was a really weird sort of run. He's only... Maguire's only seen two more wins in the last eight games. But the injuries hit after Smith left. Do you think Danny Maguire has done a fantastic job? Or do you think he has done exactly the same job that... In your opinion, do you think Tony Smith would have done just as good with the team that he had, we would have had available? I think he might have done slightly better, to be honest. I think that, you know, he's a coach who probably could have brought in the players who needed to come in and provide and recover. I think he probably could have brought them up to, you know, up to winning standard a little bit quicker and maybe picked up an extra win or two. Um, but it's just so difficult for them. I mean, you know, um, I think this this season in general must have had, like, emergency loans left, right and centre. But, yeah, it's, it's just, I think it's sad, really, because... We go into the season and we go, oh, this squad's like 20, got 24, 25 top quality players that are going to do well this season. And the reality is now is you need 35 to be top quality players if you want to complete a season. But, but you know, uh, or if you want to be like a whole KR and you haven't got the most elite, you know, sporting talent that, say, Saints have, that you need to have 30 plus men in your squad. Um, so I feel like this is a change that we're only seeing recently. And I don't know whether it's something that is being caused by the the fixture congestion or um or i don't know like changes to the way we're playing the game um but i think that yeah i think that to be honest i don't think we could have expected i don't think we ever expected whole kr to reach the playoffs um after the start of the season they had so why not start planning for the future now yeah it's really really impressive the way they sort of finished mid-table and the, the players that they've had We'll move on really quickly to the championship. We're not at a playoff situation yet, but a lot of the teams are in sort of, they're not really going to change much because of the way the table's looking. Lee are top. They can't be knocked off. Fair a second. Halifax secured uh, third place last night with a win over Witness away for the first time, I think, I think since 2010, which is absolutely massive. Um, York, Barrow and Batley can still... Unless York have a massive, massive win, they can finish no higher than fifth. Um, so it's Batley, Barrow, York. The playoff, the playoff teams are set. They're, they're not going to change. Where do we see? Do we see anyone? And we asked this question. I think I asked you this question a few weeks ago, Robin, didn't I? I, I don't know if mm -hmm. I, I can't remember if I asked you, Toby. Do you see any of those top four shocking Featherston or Lee? Those, those, sorry, those, those third through to sixth, Halifax, Batley, Barrow, or York. Do you see any of them shocking Fev or Lee on their way to pot a, a potential Super League promotion? I mean, ch championships always got that element of like a shock result when you've got like part-time players that um, you know they might they might have had a busy day at work, they might be the travels gone to hot and playing away from home has more of an impact so there's always the chance but I think that this Lee and Featherston team I, I, cut above. I think um, I'll be surprised to see uh, either of those two teams get knocked out before the um, before the million pound game um, yeah I, I don't I don't I don't see it happening but, but you, you never know in the championship Toby, would you agree on that? Do you think Lee and Feather, that's going to be the final and Lee are going to win, Lee will get promoted. Well, that's what, this is what I think. Lee will get promoted, then they'll have to get rid of half their overseas players again and they'll come straight back down. Is that the way you see the championship working out this this like at the end of the season and into next year for Lee? Um, I wouldn't say... I'd, I'd say Lee are sort of almost guaranteed promotion at this point. Um, in fact, I, they've signed players who, to be fair, I would... I would have expected to be given Super League contracts when they decided to move um, to the Northern Hemisphere. So I think that Lee are guaranteed, but I do think that Halifax or Batley um, can provide a challenge to Featherston, especially now Lee have sort of discovered the framework for beating Featherston. Maybe if you can figure out a way to sort of do that 
um, with your own personnel, I think Featherstone are, might be there to be beaten. Yeah, I think Feather there to be beaten by potentially any of that other top, top six from, from Halifax down to York. The playoffs are probably going to be as they are. Batley Barrow is probably going to be the other game, whether it's at, um, played in Cumbria or whether it's played in West Yorkshire, we're not sure. Robin, as a York fan, are you happy with your season? Sneak, uh, obviously, comfortably in the playoffs, but obviously not as good as the other the teams above you. And obviously, there's there's obviously a, full, a couple of full time sides above you. But you you must be pretty pleased with the result. Seventeen wins out of twenty six, and it's only the it's only the fact that Barrow have drawn once and Batley have drawn twice that they're above you. Yeah, I mean, it's been a it's been a pretty good year. Um, a lot a lot more um, stable than last year. Uh, and it feels like we're sort of like building and sort of like cementing ourselves as a, a proper championship um, like playoff team. Um, there's been a few few bad results uh, and there's been a few games that we just sort of like bottled it. Uh, but overall, yeah, yeah, good result, good good season. I'm 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 pretty pleased with it. I would have been disappointed if we didn't make the playoffs. When you look at the other teams that are, that are below us now. Um, and there's still a chance, you know, we've got Workington this week, so and they're obviously at the bottom of the league. So we could, we, there's a chance that we could um, bump up one more place. I don't know, I don't know who Batley and Barrow are playing, but there's, there's still a chance that we get that fifth spot. I believe Barrow have got Lee, so I don't think that will. One of, one of them, one of them two has got Lee, so they're probably going to get absolutely annihilated. Uh, dropping down to League One, Toby. That must have been heartbreaking for the the loss at the weekend when Swinton jumped above you guys, mate. To, to take that home semi-final or I mean, home playoff game I, I'd like to say it was but it's exactly what we've come what I've come to expect of Crusaders they they are like you know you know in the same way that like um some teams are cur- like some football teams are cursed to just uh, never win a big occasion or all that kind of thing yeah it's that it is that kind of thing that's coming that kind of vibe that's ha- at, at crusaders now is that like we'd be if like if, after a couple of years it was if we didn't drop the ball we'd be much higher up the table and now it's like uh, if we could just win those games at the back end of the season we'd be in a much better position um so yeah i'm not too sure um how to feel about it um i think it's sort of come to be expected um, but it's just it is just disappointing in general um, because uh, I think that we've proven that at the very best it's only Keithy better than us. Yeah, no, that I, I in my opinion I think you are the second best team in that league in terms of the consistency that you've played with. But like, same as last year, you kind of fell off towards the end. Um, do you think that will change next year with a new coach, or do you think it's just in in built into the way the Crusaders are sort of like West's finishing ninth every year until you know last year and the year before and this year they just get progressively sort of more disappointing yeah we'll move on Women's Super League South uh, sorry not Women's Super League South just Women's Super League in general Grand 17th of September Grand Final um, York Sea Knights sealed their place in their first ever Grand Final as they beat Wigan 12-4 at Headingley. And then Leeds saw off St. Helens 14-6 after a brace from Sophie Robinson and they they will meet. Um, did either of you two catch these games on Sky? Because I thought they were absolutely outstanding and how they, they just seemed so much more physical, so much more intense. I know they were playoff games and it was all about getting to the Grand Final, but I think one of the games was 4-0 at half-time and the other one was 0-0. Like, you can't ask them much more when you want playoff rugby, can you? No, I, I didn't. I didn't catch them. I've, I've um, watched the highlights, and I, I totally agree. I think the women's game is just getting better and better each year. Um, from from like a York point of view as well, we've had a, such a great year. We we picked up a trophy at the Nines tournament, um, the league leaders as well. So um, it's been it's really good to see, and um, I'm I'm. I'm really, I'm, I'm really proud of this York team, and they, they get a lot of um, the same resources as the men's, and I think it's really paying off. So it is something that I am actually really proud of, and um, I would like to try, and um, at the very least, I'll catch the final. But I'm, I'm, I'd like to go and see it because 
Um, in, uh, being a York fan, there's not many opportunities to watch a York team lift the trophy. So, um, yeah, we'll see. Toby, are you gonna are you gonna make sure you get to watch this final, whether it's on TV or, or in person? Probably got a derby game that day. If you tell me when it. Oh, when it's on 10 minutes beforehand I might, I might remember um, it's not that I don't want to it's just there's lots going on um, it's the sort of yeah I guess that's it is when you're a general sports fan it's sometimes you get that thing where you, you know you have to prioritise but well yeah I'll try I'll try and watch it I do want to support the women's game and it seems like we now have got four top teams because we started this season saying it's Saints Leeds finals Expect Saints and Leeds to smash everyone, and now we're going. Oh well, now Leeds, you know, now York, and we're going to write up there as well. So really promising. Doesn't look as promising in the bottom half of the uh, women's Super League in terms of that growth and development, but uh, it's it's coming. Um, I think it's a sport now that women are more interested in playing them. In general, women are more interested in playing. Um, than men, um, probably. I don't know if that's you know something to do with the fact that you know women haven't had the same opportunities to access it for such a long time. Um, but yeah, it's uh, it almost feels like it might be a, a bit of a way forward, um, especially to sort of grow in the game. Yeah, no, I totally totally agree. Um, I'm I'm looking forward to the to the game as a whole. Sunday, the 18th of September at the Totally Wicked Stadium is is going to be the final. So. It'll be it's ten pound for an adult, five pound for a junior, and concessions. And I think it's uh, there was something that said free for some people as well. I believe for if you're under a certain age. Um, Super League Dream Team was announced, I believe yesterday. That time of recording Monday. Um, I wasn't I was there was I wasn't shocked with the, some of the players that were named, but something that shocked me and we kind of mentioned it just before we went, we started recording was the fact that the forward pack are all elig eligible for England. And so is Wellsby at six, but from seven all the way through the backs up to full back, they're all imports. Um, does that say more about the type of rugby that England play in terms of how physical we are up front, but then we've got just got nobody to finish it off compared to other teams? If I was to if I was to put put a if I was to just throw something out there, I would say. Part of the reason is because the the climate of the UK means that kids grow up playing rugby on wet, muddy pitches, and that tends to reward forwards and sort of bring back the sort of flair and skill on the outsides. Whereas in the Southern Hemisphere, in, in Australia, New Zealand, and all those Pacific Islands, it's a much warmer, drier climate wet during this during the summer and so the ground's firmer and in a way that that rewards the the speedsters of our games and the backs and i think that's why we see um like all of our greatest exports to the nrl have been in in the forward pack sam burgess gareth ellis adrian morley and there's very few backs that have come from england and made it in the nrl so i, I think that's i if, if that's to me is the is the general reason why and um i think i think that's what we're seeing here so perfectly example um but it is it is really really interesting and it kind of um i don't know i don't like it i wish there was i wish <laughs> we had some stronger backs like when we were picking our england team and we, we're struggling to pick wingers and centers and things um, it's something that I don't know. I don't know how you deal with it, but we kind of need we kind of need some strong backs. Yeah, I totally, I totally, totally agree. Uh, Toby, when you look at this dream team, you've got Chris McQueen, Brodie Croft, uh, Aledski, Kenny Dow, Knowles for the fourth year in a row, which is ridiculous because I didn't think he'd been in the league four years yet. Um, Jack Wellsby, Jai Field, Bevan French, James Roby, Liam Farrell, Tim Laffey, Alex Wormsley, and Ken Sio. Is there anyone in there that you look at and go? I don't think you probably deserve to be in there or you look at that and go, I think this person potentially could have been in ahead of you, but it doesn't necessarily matter. Like Chris McQueen came out and said he was surprised he was in the squad himself. So I think the only player to me, the only player to me who I go, I'm not, you know, I'm not sure if you should be there is Tim LaFay. 
Um, that's mainly from the perspective of how the hell are Salford like fifth and fifth, sixth in the table, but got three players in there, and it almost feels like a bit of recency bias. Bias. Um, yeah, that's the only player where I sort of. Um, but then you also look down who the other centre options could have been, and I think the only sort of players I could suggest to sort of rival him um, would be uh, a Ricky Latelli or a Toby King at Huddersfield. Or potentially um, got, sort of a comrade. Yeah, I mean, you've I got Dean Farre, Thomas Sonny Lange at Catalan. They finished, what, third, fourth in the table? Yeah, that's it. There's no Catalan representation, which surprises me. And I think that Huddersfield are underrepresented compared to Salford. Um, but other than that, I think it's pretty fair across the board. Yeah, it's quite a nice team when you, when you look at that and go, OK, this is Super League's this year's best Super League pack, right? And yeah, um, I think Farrell might potentially miss the World Cup or the start of the World Cup due to an injury. But you look at that and you go, okay, all them forwards then, or all them England players in that team should be in that squad, shouldn't they? Just because if the season they've had has meant that they're in the Super League dream team and they they are the best in their position in that league, just if you, if you think of it like that, then they've got to be in it, haven't they? Yeah, I, I think so. I think... Um, I think Chris McQueen has a, had a good year. And, um, I mean, Liam Farrell has clearly been the best second rower, but Chris McQueen's up there. I think th- there was one name that I'd say could have deserved to have been in the team that hasn't, and that's uh, Tommy Makinson. I think he's played really well, and I think he's he's right up there in the top try scorers. Um, and he kicks as well, so I, I think maybe, for me, he sneaks in above Ken Sia, Um I think I like, I like Bevan French as the other winger because I think he's so dangerous. Um, but yeah, I think I think um, Tommy Mason's maybe a bit hard done by not getting in there. Yeah, I think the I think you look at that though, and you think okay, you look at assists, right? Wellsby's in there with twenty seven, but Jake Connor and Tui Lolahea have got thirty three and twenty nine between them. I know as teams like. Connor hasn't like Hull FC have done awfully, but Connor's got thirty three assists this year. Lola Hay has led Huddersfield to to twenty nine. If you're looking at halfbacks and the way they've played, I know Croft is unbelievable, but like you could and Wellsby sort of playing out of position if they've put him at six and that. You've I think one of those two have, have probably deserved to be in there as well. Mm. And like Ash Hanley's made four hundred meters more than Jai Field. Because, do you know what I mean in terms of his carries? Like, he, yeah. you're looking at that and going, okay, he, he, realistically, he could be ahead of Jai Field, but Jai Field is probably the best player in that Wigan team. So it is I think when you have to choose it, I do think when you have to choose it based on like position, it becomes harder because my instinct would be to say, well, Jack Wellsby could play centre, Waller here can play six, uh, Jake Connor can play centre or whatever. I think Jai mm. Field does deserve to be in that, to be fair. But I think it's because my instincts to say, well, why can't we just cram three fullbacks into it? But then that's not the point of yeah. it, is it? No, no, I, I totally agree. No, I, I do that, get that. That is it. Is I think that honestly, I think that we're in a bit of. It just proves that sense of crisis that we're in. Yeah, in terms of our, in terms of the backs mm-hmm. that this this team has got available. Um, before we move on to set of six, it was we mentioned it a while ago. Dom Young. This is. It, it came out this week that it looks like he's been picked in the England squad. Obviously, we haven't. We haven't seen it yet. We haven't. We haven't. We don't know when it's coming. We know it's coming soon. Um, I believe some of the squads are starting to be announced. I think the Fiji extended squad, or the the not as extended as the, or the previous extended squad, has been announced, and their captains have been announced. But Dom Young, he said he was eligible for Jamaica. He was happy to be picked for Jamaica. It looked like he was going to the World Cup with Jamaica, and then McGill very retired. Marshall seems to have picked up this little injury. And there was another injury to a winger, and I was like, "Oh no!" And then Dom Young was like, "Okay, now I want to play for Jamaica." When those injuries and the retirements happened, I sat here and went, "Sean Wayne has to get on the phone to him, doesn't he?" And it looks like he has, and he's going to be playing for England. Do you think he starts? Do you think he he is in the starting jersey? Because if he's not, I don't think he would have gone. I don't think he would have switched back to England. That's how I see it. Either yeah, one of you fine. can answer that, I think. Yeah, I, I, I don't see why not. I mean, what are the alternatives? I mean, we've got Tommy Makinson was definitely in there. Who, who did we pick? Was it Ash Hanley? Oh, I think Han- Hanley, Makinson, Marshall and McGilvery, I think, were our four. Um, but obviously with McGilvery retiring, I think then Dom Young comes in. 
but he hasn't played yeah. loads of... I don't know how much he's played towards the end of the season. I think, Toby, you might know a little bit more about how much he might have played if you've caught any of it. But he has to be... It might, I think, for Dom Young, for him, Sean Wayne must have said to him, you are going to start every game for me. Or yeah. I think he would have played for Jamaica just to get the experience. Yeah, that, that that logic makes sense to me because um, I'll be honest, I didn't I didn't see this piece of news. So in my mind, he was he was playing for Jamaica because that's what we'd heard early in the year. So yeah, to to change his mind now, I I agree. Um, that's strange. You know, he's he's I feel like he's given up a definite starting spot for Jamaica, and I don't know why he would give up give up for a potential spot in an England team. Yeah, I I agree with you on that. Yeah, Toby. Do you think? Do you think the same, or do you think actually, you might have seen him come out and say it. His his words were, "For a chance to win the World Cup for England, in England, for the country that I was born in, means more to him than than playing for a team he's eligible to play for." Where do you think? Do you think this is good on his half, or on his sort of? The way he's acted, or do you think actually he should have just stayed? I think he might have just stayed with Jamaica. Or are you looking at that going? Let's see how the World Cup comes about first, because if he plays, I don't think he's going to be upset. Uh, I have no clue, Brad. I mean, it's it's a bit it's a bit of a hard one. I think I think that um, yeah, I think it's sad that he's not going to play. For, he might not play for Jamaica, um, but at the same time, you know, um, you go to the you know the way the international rugby league works. He can always go to Jamaica once he's won a World Cup, I guess. Um, you know, especially if you like what this England squad's doing. Um, if you've been sold the right thing, if you like the players who are going to be part of it, you've been keeping your eye on Super League, then it's understandable. Um, what I'll say about him is he's been on a uh, heavily losing side this season. Uh, he last he played in the last six games that he missed round 19 but he's played 23 to 25 um and he's well he only tackled he's only made 80 percent makes 80 percent of his attempt to tackle but his missed tackles have been a lot less in the second half of the season so he is definitely improving it almost feels like the season the world cup's come a year too early for him to be a starting winger for me mm. um but uh maybe there is something you know there's something they've seen him but with the way tom makings has played the way Liam Marshall's played, um, I think it's quite difficult to sort of put Dom Young in that team um, when you've been on a sort of losing side for the whole season. Yeah, 18 tries in 26 games for the Knights so far is not a bad return, I don't think. But the way, like you said, the way Marshall's played, the way Makington's played, the way Hanley has been absolutely outstanding the whole season is, has been absolutely phenomenal for him. And it's going to be very, very interesting to see whether he's actually picked or not. Um, all World Cup squads are due to be announced on September the 24th, which is the day of the grand final. So you might find that we find out just before or you might find we find out after or during the week before. Um, with it being a grand final week, I would have thought the squad will be announced after kickoff, wouldn't you? Or oh, sorry, after the full time whistle. So then, so then these lads and sort of there's not much pressure on them, maybe in the public eye, wouldn't you? No, I'm not not sure really. I guess I, I've got a feeling that sometimes they they know before we do, so they might know before the final. To be honest, yeah, but let's. We, I'm very much looking forward, but at least we know now that how much time we have to to pick our squad. So I think next podcast will be sort of going through our our final changes and our, we'll obviously do our Super League Grand Final and Grand and our Grand Final previews, but we'll also look at where we where our England squad was before and what changes we've made between now and halfway through the season but coming up towards an hour in and, and we need to do our set of six like I said Robin you've taken a massive lead oh, well, I said go on oh, sorry so I was on the um, dream team uh, Wikipedia page and I saw at the bottom it said the gates had thunder I've had two uh, players in in the dream team so I had to go on a little thing and what? In, so did you know that in 1999, Gates and Thunder got set up, came six in the table, then merged with Hull FC and never played another season? Yeah, they had Willie Peters in there and someone else. I can't remember the other one. And they, yeah, they merged into Hull FC and then they set up the one which gets, which has like two fans who travel around the country that became Newcastle. <laughs> I've just, I've just never knew. I was there, like, hang on, what? How the hell did they get into Super League? They've all 
Ten Pot Little Club. <laughs> Ten Pot Little Club. <laughs> They were, they were yeah, they were, they were, they were, yeah. Um, was, do you know what surprises me? Halifax and Witness have only got one. Yeah. That's that's a shock. Halifax's one is Gavin Clinch from, I think, 1998. Um, I don't know who the Witness one was. It was probably... How oh. the hell did we let a team finish sixth and then merge into Hull FC? Like, that could have been a footprint in Newcastle long before Newcastle Falcons got rugby union going up there. I'd blame Nigel yeah. Wood, mate. I think he was in charge then. And he he's never does anything right in the world of rugby league, does he? So you've seen his ca- catastrophes take... Shush. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's not... Just... Oi, you... I meant Bradford, all right? Leave him alone. Leave... Stop. Relax. Relax. Um, like I said, Toby, you are struggling, aren't you? You're eight points behind me. No, seven points behind me. Ten points behind Robin, who's stretched his lead a little bit, but... I think these games here are going to be where it's sort of won and lost as we get into the tight, tight parts of the season. Game number one, Catalan versus Leeds in Perpignan. Third time this year. 1-1 one, one each. Leeds massive comeback. Leeds lost the other week quite comfortably. Where are you... This is a t- I think this is a tough one in terms of obviously the way the games have been played. But for me, I'd love to see Catalan win. I'd love, I'd, I just, I don't like Leeds. Yeah, I think, like, Leeds, um, oh, it's so difficult, never right off the Rhinos. But, like, the, the, the game that they played against Cass this week was, like, um, it was scrappy, but it's just in the DNA, isn't it, to, to come out on top, um, but I don't think that's enough when you compare them to Catalans that have, um, like they've had, they've rested players last week. They've been up at the top of the table all year. Um, so yeah, I, I don't I don't think that Leeds will be able to do it, but I just know that they will. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, I'll go. Yeah, I'll go. I'll go. Catalans, go in my head. Toby, where are you going on this one? Um. Yeah, it's a really difficult one to call, but that is the point of playoff rugby, isn't it? So I can't really use that as an excuse uh, if I want to get this wrong. But I always feel like he'd start the season dreadfully, which they did, and then just go on an upward trajectory for the rest of the season. So I'll take Leeds. I knew that was coming. I, f- I, I knew it. I didn't write it down before, and just in case you changed it, but I kind of knew it. Um, over to the NRL, second versus third. Cronulla versus North Queensland. I'd love it if Cowboys won this, but the way the Sharks have been playing lately, I don't think we can really look past them. The way the forward pack are, are sort of making themselves known and just competing, I, I really can't see past the Sharks for this one. Yeah, I've actually got to agree with you. I think the Sharks have been setting a good platform. I really like Nico Hines and what he's done. I, I saw someone I saw someone tweeted out this week saying um, that Melbourne really dropped the ball when they decided to keep Pappenhausen and let go of Nico Hines. They probably should have done the other way around, um, which I which I haven't thought about. I agree with, and potentially that's uh, Bellamy's only ever mistake. But who knows? But yeah, so I I, I like the Sharks. I think. Um, the the Cowboys they're great but um, yeah no, I like the Sharks team Toby are you going for triple Sharks or are you trying to win some points and you're going to go with the Cowboys um, yeah do you know what I'm trying to win some points but but I do believe that it's the Sharks to lose that's my that's mainly coming from the fact that when I look through the Cowboys squad there is so many players there who I said should never have stepped foot on a rugby league pitch again at the end of last <laughs> season you, you absolutely ripped them to shreds earlier in the year I think it was like episode 2 or 3 yeah, and it's just like like they have got some good players they? you know, they've got Tabalolo interesting that Chad Townsend's made such an impact on the team there's a discovery of Jeremiah Nane or whatever his name is yeah unreal um, there's been some real positive points but Scott Drinkwater starting fullback like that they've tried and failed with that so many times and now it's apparently working I don't think it's a long term solution so, I think yeah, you know what I think it is. I think it's the introduction of Luciano Lelua halfway through the season. Like, yeah, well, that 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 bloke is not a liability for them, is he? Yeah, I think he just wanted out of Leichhardt. I think. Don't blame him. Like, 
relax. He's he was probably on more money at Light Up. And I'm not being funny. It's, it's it does seem like he's come in and he's played nine games, scored two tries, and he just seems to have done a hell of a lot more work. Um, but I found the reason he left was because they got rid of, rid of Match and he didn't didn't like the fact they got rid of Match. So fair enough to him. Um, so Toby, what were you? Where are you going? You going Sharks or are you going Cowboys? I'm going Cowboys for points, but I am a big believer in the sh- like the Sharks. Can't blame you. One bit. Uh, next up, Super League playoff tie. Uh, Huddersfield versus Salford. Another sort of, I think it's third versus sixth, I believe, in this one. Very, very interesting to see who wins this game. I'm not going to go first this time. I'm going to see what you two say. Actually, Toby, would you like to go first? I absolutely would not. I think Robin should. <laughs> I'll go first. Go on, you go first. I think that um, both teams have sort of played really well this year. But I, I said right at the start of this year, I like this Huddersfield team. They've, they've won a gra- They've not. Sorry, they've played in a grand final this year. So I think that gives them some kind of edge, some kind of like. I think I feel like they're going to want to prove that they can do it. And so I think that that will give them just enough uh, at home to um, to beat Salford. They also they also beat um, they won a, 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 a they won by a part, by a penalty in Golden Point last week. So they can close out a tight game. They've had a good test of running up to it. So that, I think that, that tight everything... game was against Wakefield, who were, who were already safe. Yeah, by the way. Well, that's true. But Wakefield have been on a good run of form recently. And they've beat some some um, some good teams this year. So I I know that they I know that it's against a rubbish team, but it's still a good tester for Huddersfield. And that's why I think that actually out of, out of all these four teams that are playing this weekend the Super League, they're actually the most the most geared up for the playoffs. And so I'm back in them. Fair enough. I like that. Uh, go on, Toby. You can go next. So I think Huddersfield are a more talented squad than I do agree with what Robin said. But one, I was a Brody Croft fan since the moment he signed for Salford. Um, I've picked him up all season. Uh, and two, there's just something, the way Salford were played and the way that Manche- Mancunians got behind Salford when they had their run with Jackson Hastings. I just think that Salford got something a bit more special. You talk about Huddersfield playing at home, but I don't think it means anything. Um, and I need points, so I'm going to take Salford. Ooh, for, and for me, I think the way the interviews were conducted after the game, the three members in the Dream Team, Watson's been there, and uh, who, who's in charge at Salford now? I've totally forgot. It's Rowley, isn't it? Ra- Rowley's not yeah. been there and done it, but he's done it at the Champions. He's done it with Lee. When he's got promotion from the championship. He's got promotion from the championship, but then Watson's been there and done it with Salford previously. I think this is this is such an interesting game because you've got so many little stories, both with the the managers, well, the coaches. You've got stories with each of the players, whether Will Price and those young Huddersfield lads are going to stick around. Like the what's just what just what is going to happen? I think I just and the way I, the way Salford are carrying themselves towards the end of the season, and they've just sort of silently snuck in there. They were always kind of safe, but they've just sort of kept themselves. They've always kind of just been comfortable. We've never really had that thought of until the last couple of weeks. We were never really saying, "Oh, Salford have to win here." And yes, they're sick, but we've seen it happen before with Salford. So I'd, I'd love to see it happen again to see them get to the grand final. Um, Game number four, we spe- we mentioned it earlier, is South Sydney versus Sydney Roosters. Massive, massive game. They played each other, what, last weekend already? Then they just play each other in the last round of the comp? Or the yeah. round before? And I know players, like, they, they, both teams, I believe, needed... Oh, no, it wasn't uh, last round. It was... Oh, yeah, it was last round. Um, Roosters played Rabbitohs. 26-16 was the score. But... Ooh, a tough one because both teams played pretty pretty strong starting 13s tough tough I don't know where I'm going to go on this one out of just pure wanting them to win I'm going to go with the Rabbitohs no, and for no other reason than the Rabbitohs really 
But I'd like to see Ollie yeah. Gildart do something nice. I think the the difficult thing is, um, like obviously the Roosters losing Joey Mandu versus, so there's going to be someone standing in at centre Oliver, again. Oliver Gildart, mate. Oh yeah, Oliver Gildart up against Latrell Mitchell and Cody Walker, and I just think that's a scary prospect. Um, I I think. I don't know. It's difficult to call. Both teams have been like that, just like mid mid table. Could could get a result, might not. Roosters have had a pretty pretty strong defence and seems to start well. Um, I think I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go for the for the rabbits because I like I like the Trail Mitchell. I think like he does he does have brain explosions, but he's good fun to watch in the finals. So um, I'm gonna I want the rabbits. Yeah, uh, Cam, Cam Murray and Saliba Havili uh, both um, lost, were ruled out of the game due to HIA protocols. Uh, Jerry Manu, Jared Roy Hargreaves and Sam Verrills all failed to finish the match for the Roosters. And then Luttrell was forced to watch the end of the match from the sim bin. But he will be apparently one of the big names guaranteed to play next week. He isn't going to get a ban. So they, there could be a lot of big name players missing from both teams. It's just whether those big name players obviously make an impact. Toby, do you think the Roosters are going to bring out their finals football and win this weekend? Um, I don't think they will. I think that South Sydney are now getting gearing towards the team that they were on the back end of last season. Uh, in terms of their personnel, I think they might pull it out of the bag. I think they've got big game players. Uh, obviously, yeah, I'm missing Adam Reynolds. Um, has made such a huge difference to their season but you know I think that the Roosters have just not been ready for this season um, and I think Souths have actually been a unit for the year where they've been winning or losing as one so I'll take Souths nice. Very very interesting um, I'll go first on the next one It's the uh, they're the only team I think that can beat Fev um, I don't think they beat Lee this weekend uh, in the playoffs but I think they can beat Fev Go and beat York, and then go and beat Fev again in the playoffs. Um, and I'm going to go with Halifax to beat Featherstone this weekend in a game that for neither team really matters, apart from a little bit of pride. But I don't think Scott Griggs is going to go out there and play a rested side with the potential to lose momentum. They're on a really, really good run at the Shea. They're at home against a Featherstone side that no, they're going to have a week off, so it's whether or not they put out a big team or not. So for me, that's the only reason I'm going for Fax, is I think Fev rest a little bit, Fax don't, because they know they've got to go and win, the, win some playoff games. Yeah, I, th I think that, um, I think Featherstone will, will see this as an opportunity to rest players, just like Carl Hans did this, this week. Um, Brian McDermott is a, is a pro, isn't he? So I think he knows exactly what his team needs. Um, and I think strategically, them um, losing to Halifax, but having players fresh, with, well, what will that be? That will be two weeks off for them. So, yeah, um, yeah you can't miss an opportunity like that. I, I, I think, I think Fax, because Ferguson all rest players, but also, like you said, they are building up form. So I think there was a chance they could they could win this anyway. But um, yeah, no, Halifax for me. So are you going to make a triple fax one or do you think Feth don't rest and they'll come out fighting 100% and want to win this game? I need points. Fax can turn Fev over in the in the semi-final but come on Fev for this game please. <laughs> uh, and last but not least, just because I don't think we've had them much in the competition and the set of six this year, North Wales against Doncaster. Is it still at home, isn't it, anyway? I think. In yeah. the playoffs. So... Yeah. Yeah, half half two on Sunday, North Wales versus Doncaster. Run us through this one, Tobe. Um, Doncaster had a big win, um, and North Wales Crusaders did not in their last game. <laughs> it's pretty much all you need to know. Um, they've been yeah. I mean, it's a difficult one to call because Crusaders have dropped off in the second half of the season. Um, you know, the, the last two games have been losses to Swinton, lost to Keithley, a close game, a close win over Rochdale. Um, but I think Crusaders do enjoy playing at home. 
Um, I think Doncaster, um, you know, do you know what? It's impossible to call. They finished on the same amount of points as well. Um, I, I don't know. I think that Doncaster losing out on the home advantage is the major factor here. Um, and Crusaders have do enjoy playing at Areas Park. Um, they have had issues recently with having to sort of play at different venues because uh, RGC are like in charge of who plays at Areas Park. But yeah, I mean, um, I think I don't blame you for taking either one and giving it towards the end of the season. I'd suggest you pick Doncaster, um, but I'm going to take North Wales because you've got to back the boys and make some noise. <laughs> the fact you've said it's the end of the season, so you're probably going to pick Doncaster. It was quite funny because I'd already written Doncaster down before you'd even gone on that long ramble. So for me, I've got to go with Donny. <laughs> it's when, yeah. it's North Wales in the playoffs. They're not going to win, are they? I, I think that like North Wales over the last couple of weeks will have been looking at playing like the top teams in the league and they've just been beaten by them. And so like they're, they're like scrambling right now. They will have been like focus on Keithley, focus on Swinton. Oh shit! Now we've got to play Doncaster, and they're going to beat us as well. He's done it two two podcasts in a row. He's dropping S <laughs> bomb. He's he's given up now. He's done. <laughs> Robin is not bothered, is he? Oh, have you ever <laughs> seen that um, interview with Don Manfredi on Sky Sports? Yeah, that's you and <laughs> him. He swears and they catch him, and he swears again. I knew it was that one. If you haven't seen it, YouTube it. Um, yeah, so I think I think Doncaster are going to win this one as well. Yeah, no, I, 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 it's really odd because we are, we do like to see North Wales win because it means that Toby's in a really good mood on a Tuesday. But it's like we said, it's North Wales in the playoffs and well, the last two, three years, you've just sort of been disappointed with the way the season has ended for you guys and where, where it's mattered the most. But the difference this year is Anthony Murray is not sticking around, is he? He's leaving and that could sort of kick him up the arse a little bit, I think. So... It'll be very, very interesting to see. Um, if you skipped over the start of the podcast because you you don't think it's a very interesting bit, listen to this. This is massive news. We are a Rugby League World Cup media accredited podcast. Um, more news on that will be tweeted once we've heard back from um, the Rugby League World Cup organisers and we know what it entails for all of us. But that is absolutely massive news and I'm, I'm glad the lads didn't really know about it until I told them at the start. Um, but no, thank you very, very much for joining us. Um, I've been Brad. That's been Robin. That's been Toby. We'll see you in two weeks' time where we preview the biggest game of the season or the two biggest games and however many big games we've got. We preview those big games towards the end of the domestic season and we bring you our final... If we don't bring it in the podcast, we'll, we will tweet out that day. We will bring you our, fi our final England squad that we think Sean Wayne should pick. Um, thank you very much for joining us. This has been The Biff, brought to you by Swinging Arms and Shoulder Charges and now Swear Words. Thank you to Robin. Um, <laughs> and we'll catch you all in two weeks' time. Thank you very much for joining us. <laughs>